हेलो गाइस सो नेक्स्ट टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इज स्कैल्प सो द एक्सटेंट ऑफ द स्कैल्प इज एंटीरियरली इट इज एक्सटेंडेड टू सुपरा और बाइटल मार्जिनस पोस्टीरियरली एक्सटर्नल ऑसिपिटल प्रोट्यूबरेंस एंड सुपीरियर न्यूकल लाइन्स एंड लेटरली द सुपीरियर टेम्पोरल लाइन्स सो इंटीरियरली सुपरा और बाइटल मार्जिन posteriorly external occipital protuberance and superior nuchal lines and laterally the superior temporal line so very important is the layers of the scalp so s stand for skin this is the skin c stands for the connective tissue or the superficial fascia A stand for the epicranial that is the aponeurosis L stands for your loose areola, uh, areola tissue and P stands for your pericranium so this is scalp so coming on to the skin the skin is thick and hairy it formally attached to the epicranial uh, epicranial aponeurosis and through the dense fascia it has the abund uh, abundance of the sebaceous gland and the sweat glands and the sebaceous cyst are common connective tissue the fibrous and the dense containing blood vessels and the nerves it binds the skin to the sub adjacent aponeurosis to the sub adjacent aponeurosis the wound bleed profusely as the blood vessels are prevented from interaction by the fibrous tissue and the bleeding is stopped by applying the pressure against the bone see the a wound it bleed profusely as the blood vessel are prevented from the retraction by the fibrous tissue but the bleeding is stopped by applying the pressure against the bone so subcutaneous hemorrhage are not extensive since the fascia is dense very important line inflammation cause the little swelling but are much painful so s stand for the skin the skin is the thick and hairy it is formally attached to the epicranial neurosis aponeurosis and it has the abundance of your sebaceous gland and your sweat gland and the sebaceous cyst are common in the skin so connective tissue in this the uh, it contains the fibrous and the dense containing blood vessels uh, dense containing blood vessels and it binds to the aponeurosis and it pro, uh, bleed profusely as the blood vessels are prevented from the retraction but when you apply the pressure against the bone the bleeding will stop coming on to the aponeurosis aponeurosis of the occipital frontalis see this is the frontal part this is the occipital part so aponeurosis of the occipital frontalis muscle the attachment of muscle in the frontal bone the anterior skin of the eyebrows the skin of the root of the nose and the orbicular uh, orbicularis oculi anteriorly okay i repeat the frontal belly the anterior part it covers the skin of the eyebrows the a root of the nose and the orbicularis oculi and posteriorly aponeurosis coming on to the occipital belly behind to the lateral of half of the superior nuchal lines this portion and from the front aponeurosis so aponeurosis it is the aponeurosis of the occipital 
frontalis muscle in the frontalis muscle it is the uh, the frontal belly has the two portion the anterior portion and the posterior portion in the anterior portion it covers the skin of your eyebrows the root of your nose and the orbicularis oculi and posteriorly it covers the aponeurosis and the occipital belly it uh, from the behind to the lateral half lateral to the to the lateral half of the superior nuchal lines and interiorly and from the front the aponeurosis so function is the occipital belly the occipital belly this is the occipital belly it pulls the scalp back and anchors the aponeurosis while in the frontal belly it elevates the eyebrows this frontal belly it elevates the eyebrows and transverse wrinkles here so the nerve supply is by the facial nerve and the occipitalis is attached to the bone and frontalis is not this is a very important point that the occipitalis is attached to the bone but frontalis is not attached coming on to the loose areolar tissue it extend anteriorly it extend anteriorly into the eyelids because the frontalis has the no bony attachment this is a very important point so posteriorly to superior nuchal line on each side to superior temporal line so posteriorly to superior nuchal lines this and on each side of the superior temporal line so bleeding cause generalized swelling of the scalp this line the red one it is the very important line commonly asked mcq that the loose areolar tissue is also called as the dangerous area of scalp why because the emissary vein the in this the emissary veins open here and carry any infections inside the brain that is venous sinus that is why it is known as dangerous area of scalp why because the emissary veins open here and carry any infection inside the brain from here to the brain it carries all the infection to the brain which is venous sinus so bleeding lead to the black eye so caput succedaneum in newborn very important coming on to the pericranium pericranium is the periosteum of the skull it loosely attached to the surface of the bone but it is firmly adhered to the sutures so injury deep to it takes the shape of the bone and scalping injury it should be replaced and stitched because healing is better so these are loosely attached to the surface of bone sub aponeurotic space it is a potential space beneath the epicranial and the aponeurosis it is a potential space beneath the epicranial aponeurosis it is limited in front and behind by the origin of occipital frontalis muscle it extend laterally as far as the attachment of the aponeurosis to the temporal fascia it is occupied by the loose areolar tissue it loosely connects the epicranial aponeurosis to the pericranium so it contains a small few small arteries and some important emissary art veins so it contains some few contains uh, few small arteries and some important emissary veins very important these all are your mcqs dangerous area of face the lowest part of the nose and the upper lip dangerous area of scalp the loose areolar tissue layer of the scalp the dangerous zone of eye is the ciliary body 
very important these three are the important mcqs dangerous area of face area of dangerous area of scalp and dangerous zone of coming on to the nerve supply of the scalp so basically five front of a uh, five in front of auricle and five in behind of auricle so four are sensory one is motor in front of auricle the sensory are your supratrochlear nerve supra orbital nerve zygomatico temporal nerve and aurico temporal nerve this one this is your supratrochlear nerve this is your supra orbital nerve this is your zygomatico temporal nerve and this is your aurico temporal nerve and one is the motor that is the temporal branch of facial so you have four so you have four sensory and one motor the four sensory are the supratrochlear nerve the supra orbital nerve the zygom uh, zygomatico temporal nerve and auricotemporal nerve and one is motor that is temporal branch of the facial nerve coming these are the nerves these are the five nerves in front of the auricle now we are talking about the nerves five nerves which is behind the auricle so in this one is motor that is the post auricular branch of facial these Ah, uh, sorry. This nerve, post auricular branch of the facial nerve. This is your motor nerve, and you have four sensory that is great auricular nerve, lesser occipital nerve, greater occipital nerve, third occipital nerve. So, great auricular nerve. This is the great auricular nerve, the posterior auricular nerve. Ah, uh, not posterior. Your great or uh, this one. You have four sensory nerve. The first one is the greater auricular nerve. This one, the lesser occipital nerve, the greater occipital nerve, and the third occipital nerve. These four are the sensory in origin, and you have one motor nerve that is the posterior auricular nerve. So basically, you have five auricles. you have five uh, nerves in front of the auricle these are four are sensory one is motor the four are sensory these are the supratrochlear the supra orbital zygomatico temporal nerve and the aurico temporal nerve the one which is motor it is temporal branch of the facial nerve so you have five nerve behind the auricle in which four are sensory one is motor the motor is posterior auricular nerve and the four sensory nerves are greater auricular nerve lesser occipital nerve greater occipital nerve and third occipital nerve coming on to the arterial supply of the scalp so there are five arteries on each side three in front two behind the auricle the three which is in front of the auricle these are supratrochlear supra orbital superficial temporal this one this is the supratrochlear this is the supra orbital and this is your superficial temporal artery these are present these three are present in front of the auricle and two are present in behind the auricle that is post auricular and occipital this is your post auricular artery and the occipital so basically you have five arteries in which three are present in front of the auricle two are present behind the auricle the three which are present in front of the auricle are the supratrochlear artery the supra orbital artery and the superficial temporal artery the one which is present behind the auricle are the posterior auricular artery and the occipital artery coming on to the arterial supply the way same 
this is the scene as the this is the in, this is in the form of a flow chart this is in the form of a table but in this the dangerous area of the scalp number 1 number second is this table the arterial and the venous and the lymphatic drainage of the scalp these two are very important from this particular topic so in front of auricle back of auricle we have discussed the nerve supply also the blood supply also and the lymphatic drainage in front of the auricle it is drained by the pre auricular nodes and the post auricular uh, in the back of the auricle it is drained by the post auricular nodes that is the mastoid and the occipital so lymphatics anterior part through the pre auricular nodes and the posterior parts through the posterior post auricular nodes let me revise you extent of the scalp this is your skin connective tissue this is the aponeurosis this is the loose areolar tissue and this is the pericranium in this in in your skin in your skin it is attached to the thick uh, the skin is uh, hairy thick and hairy the skin is thick and hairy and it is attached to the aponeurosis aponeurotic epicranial aponeuros sorry epicranial aponeurosis it consists it contains the sebaceous glands and the sweat glands and the sebaceous gland uh, the sebaceous cyst is most common in the skin the connective tissue the connective tissue is the fibrous and the dense connecting blood vessel in this and the the bleeding profuse and are uh, as the blood vessels are prevented from the retraction of the fibrous tissue but it uh, bleeding can be stopped by applying the pressure on the bow so aponeurosis in this you have the occipital and the frontalis muscle so in the frontal belly in the frontal belly the anterior anteriorly it covers the skin of your eyebrows and the bridge or the root of the nose and the orbicularis oculi in the occipital it uh, and in the frontal belly posteriorly aponeurosis in the occipital belly behind to the lateral half of the superior nuchal lines and in the front aponeurosis so the function of the aponeurosis in the occipital belly it pulls the the occipital belly it pulls the scalp back and anchors the aponeurosis while in the frontal belly it elevates the eyebrows and causes the transverse wrinkles in the forehead so nerve supply is facial nerve a loose areolar tissue also called the dangerous area of scalp because the emissionary veins are open here and it carries the infection to the brain pericranium it is the periosteum of the skull it is loosely attached to the bone so some aponeurotic space in this it is occupied by occupied by the loose areolar tissue and it contains small few arteries and also some important emissary veins emissary veins so dangerous area of the face is the lowest part of the nose and the upper lip dangerous area of scalp is the loose areolar tissue layer of the scalp dangerous area of eye is the ciliary body so this is your veins arteries nerve supply of the scalp arterial supply of the scalp your in the front of the auricle back of the auricle arterial supply your nerve supply and lymphatic drainage so guys this is all about the scalp the two points or the two topics are important in this particular chapter number 1 is the dangerous area of the scalp number second is the table the arterial the venous and the lymphatic drainage the arterial supply the venous supply and the lymphatic drainage that chart it is very important for your exam point of view 
सो प्लीज गो थ्रू दिस स्लाइड्स प्लीज गो थ्रू दिस लेक्चर वंस थैंक यू